Okay, so now we're going to install a version of Linux into our virtual machine. And the one I suggest you use is Linux Mint. It's very easy for Windows users to be able to use Linux Mint because it has a lot in common with it. Okay, so let's just go to download here. Okay, and let's go down. Now you'll see down here that you can choose from different types of desktops, either Cinnamon or Mate. And then versions with multimedia and versions without multimedia. So you're likely going to want the version with multimedia. You'll be able to play DVDs and so on with that. You also have down here the KDE version, which is like what is on Ubuntu and the XFCE desktop. So this is the XFCE desktop and it's kind of reminiscent of Windows XP. So choose whichever one you want and you can go and check all the different desktops out. But I'm going to use XFCE and then I want the 64-bit. So I click on that. Okay, and I'm going to be downloading this as an ISO so that I can install it right from my computer. And then we go down here and we'll have to pick a mirror to download it from. All right, so I'm going to pick one of the USA ones here. And click OK. We'll just wait for that to download. OK, so that's all downloaded now. Now if we go into Linux here, we don't actually have Linux Mint in here. If you go up and look, so there's no Mint. But what we will do is down at the bottom, actually it's a little at a range here, is other Linux 3.x kernel 64-bit. Okay, I'm going to select that one. Okay, click Next. Now, we're just going to rename this machine to Linux Mint. Okay, and then where it's going to install it, you can change that if you want. I'm going to leave it. And then the maximum disk size in gigabytes, I'm just going to leave it at 8 gig. You can store it as a single file or in multiple files. The multiple files is good if you might move it to a separate machine. I'm going to store it in a single file. Click Next. Okay, and it shows you how it's going to be created. And the here's the hardware down here. So 8 gigabytes, 384 megabytes for memory, network adapter, and CD, DVD, USB controller. We're going to go into Customize Hardware. And I'm going to up the memory to 2 gigabytes. And then you can change the processors if you want. Okay, and now next here, where we're going to get the file from. And we want to use an ISO image. So we'll click on that, and then we're going to browse for where we downloaded it to. Okay, so here it is in my downloads directory. Next, your network adapter. Okay, and this is going to use the connection that we already have since I'm going to be connected through Windows anyway. Okay, USB controller, our source card, all this other stuff you could change if you like, but I just wanted to make sure that I picked up where I was getting the install from. Let's close that and finish. Okay, so you see here is our virtual machine right now. And it's all ready to go. So what we're going to do is play virtual machine and that should start up the install. Okay, we're getting an uh, error about the keyboard and remember we had enhanced keyboard at the beginning but I decided not to take it because I didn't want to do a restart that's why we're getting this message I'm just going to click OK okay so it's showing us what it can contact I'm just going to click OK and you'll see here that our Linux Mint installation is starting up okay so the install is going now Okay, so we're through the install. 
And now what we want to do is just double click on install on the hard disk. Okay, the first thing to do is pick your language. So we want English, continue. Okay, and then it comes here and I make sure that everything is okay. So it says has at least 9.3 gigabytes available disk space and is connected to the internet. Now remember, I only set it at eight gig. I had to go back and increase that. So I set it at 15. So make sure you set it higher than eight when you go through. And continue. Okay, the next screen comes up and asks us what we want to do because it's not detecting an operating system, which is correct because it's operating inside the virtual machine. So we're going to erase the disk and install Linux Mint. So install now. Okay, so it's just telling us what it's going to do here. It's going to format one partition as ext4 and create a swap partition. So let's continue. Okay, next it needs our time zone. This probably comes up correctly because it gets it off your computer right now. But if it doesn't, you can change it. Okay, next it asks for our keyboard language, continue. Okay, now we're gonna put in our name, what we want the computer name to be. We'll pick a username, a password, confirm our password, and then you can either log in automatically or require a password. So just set that the way you want it. Okay, so now it's finishing up the install. Okay, so now we have Linux Mint installed and we're on the home screen now. And then you have your start button over here. So it works much like Windows does. So there's some things you can do in there. Okay, so that's how you create a virtual machine on your computer using VMware and how you can get started using Linux Mint. In this video series, I'm going to show you how you can run multiple operating systems on your computer. And we're going to do that by creating a virtual machine. And we're going to use VMware to set up that virtual machine. One of the great things about VMware is that it is set up to run multiple operating systems out of the box and it's free for personal use. As well, it's very simple to use. So we'll just go over here, try for free. Then we're going to download for 64-bit Windows here because that's what I'm using. And then I'll save it. Okay, now we're going to open it up. Okay, so that's your standard install stuff. You should read the license agreement. You have an enhanced keyboard driver that you can install, but it requires a reboot. I'm not going to bother with that. Then product updates and start up and help improve VMware by showing them your usage, where you want it to have the shortcuts, and install. And that's it. That'll install it all. And at the end of it here, it'll ask if you want to license it, or you can just click Finish. For personal use, you don't need to license it. Okay, and as you see here, you can just enter an email address and license it for free for personal use. Or if you want to use it for commercial purposes, then you're going to need to buy a license key. So just put your email address in here, and then you can continue. After you've done that, Finish, and it'll open up. Okay, and remember that we asked it to check for updates when it first run. So if you get this, you can just download and install the update. And then once you do that, it's just going to download it in the screen here. And then it will install it when it's done. And once you've upgraded to the newest version, you can create a new virtual machine or open a virtual machine. And of course, you can upgrade if you're going to use for commercial use. So let's create a virtual machine. And then you have some options. So you can install it from a disk. For instance, I have a DVD read right on here. So I can install from there. I can install from an image somewhere on my computer. 
or I can install it later. So I'm going to install it later. Click Next. And then you can choose from a Microsoft Windows, a Linux install, Novell Network, Solaris, or Other. So there's plenty here to choose from. For instance, if you go to Other, you'll see that we have these other operating systems you can set up virtual machines for. So I'm going to be setting up a virtual machine for Linux. And then you can pick the type from down here. So you'll see that there's lots of different versions of Linux that you can choose from on here. So if you wanted, for instance, to try out a Linux install, you should research which Linux version you want to put on there. In the next video, I'm just going to go and install a version of Linux. And it's a one that is good to use for anybody that is a beginner to Linux and is more Windows oriented. So you can try it out and see if you like.